Hello, hello. Hiya. There we all are coming in. How are we going? I feel like I should put music on when I start these things to give a little bit of mood, you know, like lift music. What do you reckon? Hi, Al. Hello. Hang on, let me put this in the comments. Thanks, Candice. My hype girl. Let me get this up. Come and get comfy, guys. Oh, there's so many of you. Thanks for coming back. I'm all right, thanks, Ellen. I'm not bad. I've got a cup of tea. I hope you're all all right. Hi. Hi, Lisa. I need to talk to you, actually. Lisa, for those of you who don't know, lovely Lisa Lister in, in the comments is um, a wonderful spiritual woman who talks about moon cycles and your period. So get right involved. She's amazing. Come on. I'm going to give a little bit more time for you guys to come in and get comfortable. Sit right down. Thank you. The lipstick is Pink Pigeon. Pink Pigeon by MAC. Not a spawn. Not a spawn. Hi, guys. Thanks. The shirt is really, really, really old Topshop Charlotte, I'm afraid. Sorry, love. You might find it on, on good old eBay or Depop vibes. Thanks, Hazza. It's an old Topshop one. Come and get comfortable, guys. I'm going to give it one more minute and then we'll crack on. Hopefully, our guest will turn up as well because I always get really nervous about this bit. I'm like, I'm just going to be talking to you guys for, on my own for a really, really long time. Um, okay. Right. I'm going to get started. <laughs> All right. Welcome back, guys, to Lockdown Lip Sync. We're back for a second series. For those of you who do not know me, I am Laura Marn. You're wondering, who is this gobby little cockney on my screen? I'm a, I'm a presenter, I'm a broadcaster, and I'm proud founder of fundraising community Girl Vs Cancer, which is my little baby. And I'm back to serve up a heart is nice of good vibes for you every Wednesday and Friday on your lunch breaks in partnership with Papa John's. The last series, 173,000 of you tuned in, which is crazy. Um, and I just had to give the people what they wanted, had to bring it back. So we're going to be talking to stars of big screen and little screen about lockdown, what they've had going on since the last one, what are they taking into this one and what are we chucking in the bin? Um, and I just want to big up Papa John's for being a partner with me again. They actually sent out over 1,300 slices of pizza to care workers and key workers throughout um, the country during the last series. So they're back with this series to do that again. So big up Papa John's. Thank you so, so much. Um... Right, should we get started? Should we get started? Um, so my guest is nothing short of iconic. I'm really excited. Um, she shot to fame at age 17. It'd been, pop, been picked as a part of a girl band in pop stars, The Rivals. She has, the, well, this Derry girl, she's a Derry girl with very long legs, uh, has a string of 10 top, Top ten, a string of top 10 singles under her belt, including four number ones as part of Girls Aloud and an insatiable solo career. So let's get to work. Do you see what I'm doing here? Let's go live with Nadine. Hope this connects. Come on, girl. Hello, hello. Hello. Oh my God, I'm so happy to see you. I'm so happy to see you. How are you doing? Oh, I'm good. You're good. You said I've been loving the blonde. I am a disaster. I am an actual, actual disaster. Do you know what I'm trying? People are all organized for these Zoom things or these calls. They have their nice lights. And then I turn it on and I'm just whatever lights there. I'm like, oh, some lights are Christmas tree lights are What am I going to do? <laughs> well, you you? Must, I'm all right, thanks, love. I was just going to say, but it must mean for you then past like three o'clock, you don't get to do any lives or Zooms because there's no lights. It is so dark now. Do you know what? It's so I feel so so when I'm doing it. I mean, people. I'm not great at the internet. I'm not great at the phone. I'm not great at all of that stuff. So then when I'm there and it's getting dark and people just can't see, or you've got like the light from the blinds, or I'm running around to different rooms in the house trying to see where's lit up, or you've got the overhead kitchen light on, which is just the most unflattering light ever. I'm like, do you know what? I am not vain, and I'm just gonna <laughs> move on. It's okay. It's all right. Well, you look gorgeous, mate. And it's so good to see you. Where are you? Where are you doing this live from? Where are you? I'm in London right now. You're in London? Hello. Yes. Hello. Oh, down the road. Good to see you. I'm you glad too. you're here. You're looking Thank gorgeous. You so your, much. Um, your lipstick is matching. There's the thing that says life. You're actually completely matching. Oh, my matching. God. I'm, I didn't even clock that. Thank you. You know, that's going to be my yeah. thing now. Any future lives I'm doing, I'm going to make that be the thing. And 
I'll just say I thought of it, so I'm going to steal that from you. It's, it's gorgeous. It really, really pops. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just get started, because the whole thing with Lockdown Lip Sync is we just have a bit of a chat about this crazy year, babe, because it yeah. has been ridiculous. Like, just when I think I've got it sus and I'm feeling all right, something comes and it's like a roller coaster. So I'm really interested to speak to you about how your year's been and like looking from last lockdown and telling us a bit about how you found out where you spent it, how you kept yourself busy and looking into this one. So like what's been working for you and stuff. So talk to us about last lockdown. Like where were you at when this all kicked off? Were you in the middle of work? Was it like quite stressful? Mm -hmm. I was right in the middle of work. I was doing a... Um... It was like a 10 day tour and some of the shows there was like two shows in one night um, three shows in another night so when it was all because it happened so fast so it was mm. kind of this kind of this thing of uh, oh this you know this job has been cancelled or oh this has been cancelled or you started going to places and people were saying have you traveled to any of these regions um it was like no and then having to sign so very you know very quickly it started to ramp up and then ireland um where, where i'm from they had kind of locked down earlier they locked down maybe a week or two weeks before before the uk did so i was actually at work i was doing shows there was like you know two shows in one night where there was you know lots and lots of people all in the one place and that's the one thing we're being told to avoid no one was on the streets and then you would go on to a venue and people were everywhere and suddenly you start to worry about things like sharing a mic with somebody because like you know you're holding a mic does it go to your mouth how do you sanitize it do you spray you know so yeah it became it was one of those just new things that you have to think of and then we left once the work was cancelled we drove back to ireland yeah. and we were there before anybody said you can't go to another home we were because we i do but when i think back to the last one like this one going into it i feel like we kind of knew semi what we're meant to do now like we kind of got the gist of it but the last one it was that shock i remember just being with my flatmates and we kind of lived even before we went into full lockdown in this little bubble where we just mm -hmm. didn't really leave the area we lived in we didn't get on public transport we just went to the shop across the road but then you had these weird moments where you know if any of us had to go I had to go for a scan on the other side of London and you're getting on the tube and it's packed still and it's like oh actually what what what's the like what's the rules so that must have been yeah being in a venue full of people having to share mics that must not have done wonders for your anxieties or anything oh it didn't I was through the roof and then even you see lovely you know you see people outside and they bring presents and you know I'm always I know a lot of the fans that are there and I need hug and it's oh it's great to see and you can't do that. You're, you know, it's like, do you take the stuff? Do you, I don't know, do you have to stand it? Was it? It was just wild. And I'd seen that movie. I made the huge mistake of watching the, um, the Matt Damon movie, Contagion. Oh, you yeah. That? I think oh, everyone yeah. did that at the start, didn't they? Everyone went straight into that. And I don't think it was wise. It was awful. Because at this point, we didn't know what it was. Is it, is it as bad as that? Is it, you know, is it something totally different? And it was just terrifying to think that this, this, how, how did this happen? Where, you know, why did I just, what do we do? So you went into lockdown. So did you lock down the first time in Ireland? Yes, we were in, yeah. in Ireland. So there was just fields and sheep and they had been locked down for weeks anyway. So there really wasn't any cases. And the first oh, day I went out, oh my God, I went out, I have this coat that I wear from April day, or from like winter, my winter duvet coat. Mm -hmm. So I went out and I had gloves on, like the mask on, sunglasses on, like a hat, like a, like, you know, one of those like pulled down boy hat, the hood up from the duvet coat that goes right down. And I, and I was in a car park and I was like, I'm going to get killed by getting knocked down. Nothing to do with this virus. <laughs> I can't see where I'm going. I'm going to just fall, tumble under the middle of the road. So I was like, no, I need to chill out. Because you don't know. You're basically in full hazmat gear, heading out, not knowing what's going on. Well, babe, you're going to have to, you're going to, have to do. You're going to have to get a glue gun and some bling. And we're going to have to, like, diamond up that hood or something so the light reflects. So you're safe. Do you know what? You're so right. I, I, we should do that. Just stick some fluorescent stripes on it. Cause, I mean, that's a lockdown project. That is a lockdown it, project. Ah, it is. 
that. That could be, I can see it now, Nadine. We can see it in the new year. It's like Nadine (laughs) Coyle launches lockdown loungewear for to keep me safe on the streets. <laughs> Be safe it. in all ways. <laughs> in all um, so you, you're in lockdown, you know, you're in Ireland. Mental health wise, mm-hmm. how, I mean, were you, what were you finding was keeping your mind occupied? Like, were you able to do, like, were you writing? Were you making, like, were you making any music? Or did you take that time to kind of just be and exist? Because I know before lockdown, I'm, I'm 100 miles an hour anyway. I talk 100 miles an hour. I do everything 100 miles an hour. Mm-hmm. So lockdown really was a much different pace. And I really struggled at the start to actually chill out. And I found myself busy in myself, but then eventually got used to it. Like how, how did you find your mental health and how did you cope at the start? It was, first of all, it was, it was one of the, you just couldn't forget about it. Mm-hmm. And I remember there was this one moment and, and it was even things like food, you know, you don't want to, it was like, you don't want to waste anything. We had ordered um, an Indian takeaway and I was putting the stuff under the fridge. And, and for a second, I was really making sure. I was like, why am I so paranoid? And it was like, oh, there's a, there's a deadly virus. Like, this could be the last <laughs> takeaway we will ever get. <laughs> and then it all came crashing back. I forgot about it for for however long. Um, and, yeah, it was just, it was very much a, a daily kind of overlay how are we feeling, you know, and I was, I was locked down with, with, with quite a lot of other people as well. So it was all of us trying to keep an eye on each other, like, are you okay? And, but are you sure you're okay? Mm-hmm. And, and I am, I, I like being at home. I am a, mm-hmm. I'm a home person. I like, you know, I like that. So there was, there was a feeling of it being some kind of extended Christmas holiday, Mm-hmm. And also work in, in the industry that, you know, that we work in, you know, you spend time, there's always like, what's the next job or what's the next thing you're doing mm-hmm. here or the next thing. And this was just nothing. This was just, mm-hmm. there's not work. There's not going to be any work. There's, you know, this is a dangerous, you know, time to be loving and just sit down and shut up and just you know go through it do you know what I mean I'm not gonna 100% yeah just be out of it just just gonna do that completely switch off yeah because we never really get that time like for me it was a bit of like a head fuck like I I'd gone from you know obviously you know my medical history like I was really really sick four years ago and I had that whole year Mm -hmm. out so life was on pause so I, but I never in a million years thought that I'd be on pause again so at the start it was that weird thing of going okay, life's on pause, but actually I know the value and how precious life is and actually stopping isn't, doesn't feel okay. I'm like, I want to keep living. I want to live big and do stuff. But what it did give me the opportunity to do was really kind of hone in on what was going on in my mental health, deal with a lot of stuff that I just chucked in the back there. You know, we all do. We just chuck stuff in the back there and keep Mm -hmm. busy. And actually coming out of the last lockdown, I felt a lot more probably calmer mentally and rounded. Like, did you find that there were things around your mental health that popped up that you just didn't expect um there was and there's that thing too of you know of being at home I haven't been I haven't been in Ireland that long since I was 17 you know and with mom and dad and sisters and everybody and you find yourself almost reverting back to being a kid Mm. you know it was like I was almost waiting day you know for the school bus to come or something and it was like did I did I imagine all of this? Was it all a joke? Was I really a singer? Did I really love in London? It all, it, everything seemed so far away mm-hmm. and so far removed that I was trying to keep part of that of, of being of being present mm-hmm. and being on the moment, but also putting everything together and not trying to throw too much stuff on the back burner because there's enough okay. stuff back there anyway. Yeah, it's like <laughs> let's just you know, let's just be. Let's just try to be realistic here. Yes, this, this mm-hmm. is happening. There is a virus. Who would have thought? You know, mm-hmm. yes, I was a singer. And yes, I, you know, did love in London all of those mm-hmm. years. It wasn't, I'm not making it up. Mm-hmm. Um, and really trying to just be there as well for my family as much as I could, anybody. You know, we, we really tried to keep on top of each other. Mm-hmm. Did you pick up any, like, little projects or little, like, new hobbies? Like, I really... 
I was repotting plants. I felt like every single week in this house. I just the plant baby situation went crazy here, and I'm, I think like half the country, most people were like DIY mad, weren't they? They just wanted to make their home feel nice. Were there any little like um, things that um, you picked up? Any hobbies that helped with your mental health and kept you busy? Things that you've never done before? Yes, I well, I love barbecuing, so I barbecued every day, Ooh. every single day. We were like rain, hail, shine. I was out at that barbecue. And What's your then, dish? Just What's whatever is there. Whatever <laughs> is there. Literally, I will just throw anything on. And then I got on day, because I was doing it so often, I just started throwing stuff onto the barbecue, like chopping an onion in half, skin still on, just sitting that on the barbecue. It's amazing. <laughs> it's so handy. And it's so just, just whack a pepper on there. Just don't bother <laughs> chopping it. Just fire it on the barbecue. It'll be grand. Um, so I've done that and then once it started to open up a little more and we could see more people I could see my sister nieces and nephews and then we would hold um, a math Zumba class you know Ooh. Zumba yeah I love it Zumba love about a Zumba so we would set it all up and then everyone would all join on even the little kids too so we would do that and just wreck ourselves me and my sister <laughs> were just just an agony every day it just just ah but it felt so good because we haven't done anything for months nice. so nice. yeah it was a lot of exploring ireland exploring places i hadn't seen and a lot of food and so what have you taken into this one because obviously we're, we're easing into the second lockdown and it is a lot different i don't know how you feel about it like i i'm feeling a lot differently about this one i feel like i kind of know where I'm at and things are still open so we can still be working a lot more which is better because before I was like where the fuck am I going to pay my rent um how like it was scary for a while wasn't it really so, really it's still scary yeah like things just aren't the same but it's 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 been able to adapt to things so I'm just wondering this time with things being a bit looser with you being back in London and stuff like are you working are you working on anything exciting that you can share or are you, are you just keeping yourself occupied and exploring new things for the next couple of months oh there's always there's something felt very unnatural about about putting music out anytime mm. soon something mm. was like this is it just doesn't feel right it doesn't mm. feel right for some reason mm. um so i did i recorded a bit and there was a you know, big discussion should we put should we put the music out now should we mm. wait until next year and then there was kind of the it was like, okay, you have to make a decision, you have to make a decision. And then naturally, when I have to make a decision, the thing that I always do is just completely disappear, basically off the face mm -hmm. of the earth. It's like yeah. I don't I don't look at my phone. It's like I, I don't want to make a decision. I don't know. It'll come to me. Um, and then it did. And we are, we're going to definitely release um, release some music. There's, there's two different avenues <laughs> that we do more upbeat and fun and then something a bit more serious so i think we're going to do both i think because... and i think i think the world needs some upbeat and fun like that's one of my things i've started doing and i really realized i for me 2020 is the year that we didn't dance i know you've been doing your zumba yeah. but yeah. i feel like 2020 is the year that we haven't really gone out and danced like i'm a festival girl i miss being in amongst people mm -hmm. sweating dancing like losing yourself in music so i reckon mm -hmm. that uplifting stuff darling is going to be a hundred percent what the people need i hope so i really because you're right i you know i love doing like going to the festival stuff and just being there and it's just always it's you just look forward to it every single year and this year it was 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 there even a summer or well, was like when did that it's a blur what, what it's weird happen? isn't it because it's those mm -hmm. mark, it's those timelines, it's those markers. Like for me, it's like, all right, well, we've got the start of the year, and then this happens. Then it's my birthday in May, and I normally like have a little holiday, and then you know you have the festival season starts, and everything's kind of got these little yardsticks where you measure your year. Yeah. And I really mm -hmm. felt like we got to October, and I was like, what, what, when did the year start? Is it going to end without actually feeling like we've done anything? It's so weird. I know. It is so so weird. Really, really a strange one. And because we don't know for sure when it's going to be over, mm. just like, okay, just like getting used to this new way of doing things. And then I swear to God, I am not going to put anything off whenever life goes back to normal. I put so much stuff off. Oh, it's, I'll do this then. Or you get busy with just like daily day stuff. And I'm not going to do that. I want to go to Thailand. I want to go to Venice. I want to 
go camping outside. I want to sleep. I, I want to just do all of these things. And I'm like, I'll get to it. And I wasn't able to get to any of it. So never I know, again. Mate, a hundred, a hundred. I, well, that's, I'm kind of, that's why I'm a bit of a nightmare for being double busy and always nonstop. Because, because that's kind of how I am anyway. I'm like, just do it, just do it. Because what's the point in waiting? But actually, I feel like, I actually am worried for the amount of uh, drunks that are going to turn up in A&E when we're allowed fully back out. Because I'm yeah. like, everyone's just going to go yeah. crazy. Yeah. And get lost in it all. Which is good. We need that. We need we that need release, that. don't we? But there's something, because everything's so forced and everything, so even though they were shot in places at 10, people were just going mad. It's like, quickly, get another drink. Shot, yeah. no, two shots. I need to get this because they're going to shut the place down. So then you did find that come half nine, you're like, Oh my god, like wow, this is I feel like a teenager when you're trying to like sneak, <laughs> you know, sneak drinks from places. Yeah, yeah it did feel like that. It did, it did. It? Yeah, 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 I'm yeah. Looking forward day to just being able to, to casually sit there and not feeling like you need to like pound drinks because they're gonna take it away from me for some reason. I mean, babe, my alcohol at home I'm not a big drinker at home. I've never have been, but over lockdown that's changed. Um, <laughs> like I find myself you just really don't realize that I'm sitting there like last night I cooked myself a lovely pasta I was like oh a glass of rose and the next minute I know it's like 12 30 I'm going to bed I'm like oh my god I've done half the bottle on my own you don't realize <laughs> do you mm -hmm. you really really don't it as a thing too and because because there's so many of us that we were all together through the lock and there's always like you don't really realize and you're just chit-chatting away mm -hmm. and then you're like oh my god I'm I think I'm drunk. I really, really think that I'm drunk. And it's like, no, have to, have to knock this in my head. Zumba it out. Get back to the Zumba. Zumba <laughs> Keeping the body time. moving. <laughs> Keeping the body moving. Um, okay, so let's get on to our lip sync track that we're going to sing along together. Well, mine together. I'm Yay! very excited. When, when you sent over your track choice, I, I rang my younger brother. He's watching this, Ryan. And I was like, Ryan. You're never going to guess what song Nadine's picked. It's like oh. iconic. It's one of our favourite songs in the family, actually. And um, my mum, my sister, my brother and I all went to see her live last year. Really? We had a massive, massive, like, icons year where we saw quite a lot of amazing people. So your song is Believe by Cher. Yes, it is. What made you Love pick this off the playlist? I don't think I need to really ask, but what is it about? I was going to start moving that song in. I was going to start doing that song live, like just moving it under my set because it's the same. It's the same producer, one of the same producers. It's the same guys that done a lot of the Girls Aloud stuff. So I was like, you know, I think that would sit really well if I just move that in. Please, can you um, make sure you do that? I will. I'm going to be down the front, then... mate. I'll be down the front. Giving it some. Um, and I wanna do, do really do try to sing it like Cher as well. Not that I'm not that I'm trying to like be a, a drag act of Cher, but I am. I'm trying to do it do yeah, be Cher, fully embody the thing. And then it's all happening. Not, I know you can't not do the voice though, it's like no matter who it's like the whole thing. All right, well, look, I've, I've got to put my sequins on because this is the rules for me. I have to wear my jacket before Ooh, I do it. It's sequin jacket. Yeah. Have you got anything oh, to use as a microphone? Do you know, I did. I was like, what should I use? I was like, should I use the the remote? And then I was like, well, I, the, the, there's a brother ward sitting here. I was like, so I'll use that. <laughs> I do that. I've got, um, I've got, because... You're using your Brit Award. This is so iconic. I'm going to use the Brit Award. <laughs> we actually, I think we got the best year. Like, look at how nice this one is. It's so... Oh, my God, mate, that's beautiful. I think it's I so nice. This. this is iconic. Well, you, mine's not as good as yours, Nadine. I've got a bottle of Bacardi because oh, it's lovely. been one of those weeks. <laughs> I get you. But you've got sequins and I don't have sequins. I have, I have some woolen vibes going on. Okay, we'll we'll uh, we'll we'll we'll, we'll say we're work. even, babe. We'll say we're even, right? So <laughs> yes. everyone watching, we're gonna do our lip sync. I want everyone who's watching to grab whatever makeshift mic they've got and get right involved in this song because if there is ever a song to kickstart this whole series, it's this one with Nadine. So are you ready, babes? I'm ready. I'm ready. It's a light I can't go over the brittle one, man. 
it's totally the brittle and a broken seat that when I move it makes a lot of weird noises. It's not me, it's the chair. It's after love, yeah, yeah. I'm sure it came on there. Are you both singing? Also hold my phone. You were brilliant. Oh, you were brilliant. Natural at the left side. That's put me in the best mood. Has it put you in the best mood? Yes, I feel in a really good mood. I feel dolphins, like really happy for the day ahead. Honestly, mate, that has been what a way to kick off the new series. It's honestly, it's been such a pleasure talking to you, and what a song to pick. It's so good to see your face as well, mate, and that you're doing well and that you're oh. okay. Lovely to see you too. Eventually, to get a chat because I've been watching all you're doing. I'm like, oh, you're just doing so well. Oh, so thanks, lovely, mate. Lovely well, listen, we said we'd get a cocktail eventually, didn't we? So oh, we'll make sure we, we do will. that when we're allowed. We will. Both of us will roll on the A&E. like, we knew this was going to happen. <laughs> Be like, death by porn star martini. I could just see yeah, it now. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my love. Well, I'll let you get on to be a fabulous. Thank you so much for your time today. Well, You've been amazing. So Thank you for uh, having me. We love you loads, mate. Take it easy and look after yourself. All right, you too. Talk to you bye. Bye, 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 bye. Oh, my God, that was amazing. Oh.
I'm so flushed and I'm so excited. I cannot get over that. What an iconic return to lockdown lip sync. Thank you so much to everyone that's joined in and all your lovely comments. Like, they're just amazing. I see them popping up. Maybe start doing, try to start doing a Q&A on the next ones. A couple of questions from you guys. I think we could try and do that. A massive thank you um, to Nadine for taking time out and doing this today. What an icon. She sang with a Brit. Game over. Um, so if you're enjoying lockdown lip sync, please do let people know. Share with hashtag lockdown lip sync. Make sure you tag myself and Nadine if you put anything on stories. And we'll be back again on Friday with an extra special guest. And until then, guys, please stay safe. Please stay sane. And please check your tits. Mwah.